Well, let's get you up to speed with the latest news headlines. And acres of farmlands around the basin of the White Votat Power logo in the Upper East Region are flooded. And this is following the spillage of excess water from the Bagri Dam in Burkina Faso. Some farmers currently are counting their losses as others also rush to try and salvage some of their produce before their farms are completely submerged. Well, Joint News correspondent Albert Sorry has been speaking to some of the affected farmers and our reports. I'm currently standing just on the shore of the White Volta here in Pualugu. And in the morning when we got here, the levels of the water was just where uh, those grasses behind me are. And over the last one or two hours, we've observed the water increase all the way to this place. This place is a bit hilly, so um, the water hasn't managed to get into farmlands on this part of the community yet. But at other places of the community, farmlands are already submerged, and acres of them actually um, are currently flooded. And most of the owners of those farms are currently rushing to try and salvage what they can. So I've been talking to Vincent Atenga, who is one of the farmers here in Pualugu. Um, he was the person who took us round the first time we visited this area when it was first announced that um, the authorities in Burkina Faso intend to spill excess water from the Bagare Dam. Uh, the spillage actually started last Friday. And so Vincent has been telling us all the observations he has made. It's just every farm is now completely spoiled. Just left from the, those who are far, far small. But all the farms are spoiled. So we are, we are not crying. We don't know where we'll get food to eat. Some of us, we farm the rainy season and use the food staffs to buy our fuel and use our water pumping machines to irrigate and farm tomatoes and other vegetables. But now, all our farms have been so much. Some of the farms now, unless you use a canoe to cross, other than that, you can't get your food staffs. So like if you can have a canoes or life jackets, so that we, those who can swim small, we can use the life jackets and be carrying our food small, small to the uplands. Other than that, in fact, there will be hunger in Ghana this year. The last time I was here, um, there were many routes that you could use to access many of the farms and talk to the farmers there. Today, all those routes are covered in water. And so um, it's been difficult getting access to many of the farmers. But this particular farmer managed to get us to his farm. As you can see me holding this maize, it is not yet matured. Let it uh, two weeks to be matured. And you can see that the water has already taken part of it. And when it keeps on coming, I think the whole farm will be submerged in the water. For this year, I would say it's actually a natural disaster on the part of farmers, not only me alone. Uh, you can see that this place, the water has taken part and it's still coming. The other side, I cannot even get there to assess whether the water has taken part of it or it is still yet to enter there, I can't tell. And uh, it's a little bit far from the, the river, but because the water has taken some part of it, unless you get a canoe to cross it before you can uh, assess that farm. By these particular three acres, I will tell you that I have spent somewhere 1,500 on it. And what I'm seeing now, I don't think I can even harvest it because it's not yet matured. And the water is still coming. Show, show it to the uh -huh. It's not yet matured. And the water is still coming. So if the water should come and destroy this. Let's move to China now, where President Ekufuado is projecting relatively high economic growth for the country following what he calls sound economic policies that his government has put in place. Now, addressing a Ghanaian community in China, President Ekufuado said, the macroeconomy of the country has improved significantly, causing more investors to come to Ghana. The 18 months that we have been in office have not been easy largely because of the inheritance that we had, very little money, and many things in disarray. If you will remember, take your minds back about the state of our economy when we took office. 
you will understand the difficulties that were in the way of the government. I say this not by way of a complaint, because we had a very good idea that things were not in a good state when we came. But I state it just to give you the background to some of the actions we've had to take to begin to revive the Ghanaian economy. And I think that any objective observer would say that those measures have been, by and large, have been successful. A 3.6% rate of growth was translated last year to an 8.5% rate of growth. And this year, all the projections are that we will repeat that same rate of growth for the year 2018. So two years in succession, we'll be seeing relatively high rates of growth. In my view, we need to increase it even more if we're going to go over the hump and then get into the process of self-sustaining development. But you have to begin from somewhere. The issues to do with the deficit have been more or less addressed. A 73% fiscal deficit yet to GDP ratio went down to 68%. Rates of inflation have gone down. Generally, the macroeconomy of Ghana has, proved, has improved significantly. Now, speaking on the Gallam Say menace, President Ikufuado said he held discussions with the Chinese leader on the involvement of some Chinese in illegal mining. Now, the president said they have agreed in as much as those who fall foul of the law will be punished. Those going about legitimate business will be protected. This phenomenon of Galamse has meant the devastation of large tracts of Ghanaian land. A landscape in many, many areas become very ugly because of this in indiscriminate exploitation of, of, of the lands. Some of them going deep into forest reserves. Are situations people go and dig in forests at midnight, hoping to escape the scrutiny of the law enforcement agencies. And they have active support and connivance, or even of officials on the ground. There is no future if we continue down that road. And together, we have to stop it. Unfortunately for us, again, there are foreigners who are praying and acting in this area. Some of them come from here. In my meeting with the President Xi Jinping yesterday, I said it to him quite frankly that um, we have this situation and there are many of his compatriots who are involved in this exercise. And I want him to understand that when the law enforcement agencies in Ghana act against them, we're not acting against Chinese. There's no anti-Chinese policy in Ghana. Today, China is our largest trading partner. China has made very important, significant uh, contributions to the development of our infrastructure and to the growth of our economy. So we can have no quarrel with Chinese presence in Ghana, and we don't. But we do have a quarrel with those who will get involved in this illegal mining. And now, as far as that is concerned, I don't intend to have to, to I no curve, no bend. I'm not changing my mind about this fight against the galaxy. So, so yesterday in our discussions, I did bring it up. And he himself was the first to recognize that, yes, uh, Ghanaian laws had every right to deal with people who were involved in illegal activities. And he would be the first to recognize our right to deal. Obviously, he would, he would, what was of concern to him is that those Chinese in our country who had legitimate rights, who were going about their businesses lawfully, would, would, would require the protection of Ghanaian law. I don't have any difficulty about that. And that is the way it should be. People and let's come home. The mayor of Accra, Mohamed Ejeso, says the capital is on course to becoming
The cleaner city in Africa is as heaps of garbage which used to be on the shoulders of major roads in the capital have been cleared. During his agenda last week, Gage worked to achieve President Ekufuado's bold declaration of making Accra the cleaner city in Africa. The mayor in an interview joined news on the sidelines of the presentation of some 500 garbage trucks to some district assembly stated his outfit is adopting various strategies to overcome that hurdle. It is, it is doable, it is possible, it is achievable, and we are fully on course. As I speak to you today, you may not find mountains of refuse in Accra as it used to be when we came into office. And that's a, a matter of a great achievement to us. As it is now, we will be able to, to, to deploy people also onto the streets that are also even doing waste picking on the streets. So there are a lot more than it. And then we have been able to, the household coverage of waste collection is now almost 80%. So we are, we are indeed winning the war. The challenge sometimes are the major markets where we are supposed to deal with the, the Agboglushi, the uh, Okanshi, the Katamanton, the Kaneshi, Mokola. These are the areas that we have a bit of a challenge. Of course, strategies have been deployed to be able to combat it and win that war as well. And once that is won, generally you will see Accra to be very clean. So whilst we are winning the war on the household waste collection that we have reached about 80%, so indeed the war is being won. The record shows that we are winning the war and by the grace of God, we'll be able to get there. Right, so before we go, have you ever walked through a trotro station or a bus stop and been literally mobbed by a number of young men each trying to help or almost pretty much shove you into a waiting minibus? People call them shadows and their job is to try hard to get as many buses as possible filled with passengers and of course they get paid a pittance for that. Joy News' Selinam Ampo tells us the story of 24-year-old Edward Gagnon, a shadow. Here is her report. A tough life on the streets of Accra for 24-year-old Edward Genio. The struggle for survival begins I'm here I'm at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange bus stop. His job is basically to assist the driver's mate to call for passengers. Without good education and skills, the prospect of getting a good job is virtually non-existent. From morning to late evening daily, he joins others to compete out here in the sun, running, jostling, and directing passengers into a trotter all for some few coins. When I was young, my parents passed away. My uncle took me and sent me to school. After junior high school, he said he could no longer further my education. I decided to stay around and do odd jobs for some little money to survive. One day, I was just walking around and a man asked me to help get passengers into the vehicles in exchange for some money to get something to eat. Edward is part of a large number of youth in Ghana without employment. The Labour Force Survey report commissioned by the Ghana Statistical Service suggests that more than 1.2 million persons from 15 years and older are estimated to be unemployed, representing a total unemployment rate of 11.9%. You know, there's a no job in the country, so if you go this job, you go find job, they say uh, certificate, wait, wait, you no get that one. So only I just come here to make a small, small for me to get something for my children. 
The reason why you shadow the cars is because it is very difficult for the mate to only to help people to enter into the car. So you also stand so you also stand on the car. So and drivers, however, are the biggest beneficiaries of the sweat of these boys who call for passengers. When the shadow boys, as they are called, are around, the drivers are excited. As a driver, do they help your way? Yes, they help our work because they don't have work and they, they, they have, don't have uh, no work. That's why they are helping us so that we can get a passenger. Maybe the mates can shadow all the time, see, but they, they get time and then they, they know the people over there so that they will help us to load. So that they need to, because of lack of employment, so they need to give them so that they get something to eat. Poverty is a harsh reality of life. Most of these young people want to work. But when you live in a country where the window of employment keeps shrinking by the day, with many people losing their jobs in the midst of banks collapsing, some are forced to find work and get paid for anything in the shadow of employment. Selinam Ampost report for Joy News. Fascinating story there. Yeah. It's one of many uh, stories that you'll be hearing more of as the news cycle continues throughout the day. Well, so please get interactive with us. On Facebook, you can watch us live. It's, it's a regular feature for our interactive show now, uh, as well as other shows throughout the rest of the day on the channel. And join us on TV is our page on Facebook. And you can also give us your tweets at join us on TV. And let us um, also have you commenting on the live feed on YouTube. Please Indeed. check out our channel, Major Online TV. Indeed, connect with us as the show continues from now till 9 o'clock. But you know what's coming next, don't you? The Consolidated 4 bring you the newspaper review.